Thursday, October 1st, and I just want to um, go through your lesson with you in case you didn't have a chance to um, be with us today. Uh, so today we're going to go through two vocabulary words. We're actually going to talk about the word strive from Wednesday. We're going to talk about negotiate from today. And then I'm going to talk to you guys about um, plot mountains, and we're going to use thank you, ma'am, as our example story for that. Um, so there is a link on um, Canvas to the story. So if you need to refresh yourself with the story, um, you can go ahead and do that there. Um, the other thing that you'll want from Canvas is to make a copy of the slides for today. So if you walk through the agenda uh, on Canvas for uh, Thursday 10-1, uh, you'll be able to get all the information to complete the activities we're doing in this lesson. So let me start with vocabulary. Uh, yesterday's word was to strive. And remember, to strive, it, it's a verb. It's something that you do. So remember, we're verbing all the time. Um, the definition, it, it means to try hard or to work towards um, something, to work towards a goal, to work you know, towards anything. Uh, a synonym would be to try. So remember, it's a similar word. So examples of things you might strive for, things like getting good grades or reaching a personal goal or a fitness goal, or I want to be able to make, you know, 100 free throws in 10 minutes. You know, those are those are goals, things we strive for. Uh, and so the picture that I had was actually um, a woman. It looks like she's working towards some sort of athletic goal. Uh, and I thought it just kind of fit, but I like how to strive for excellence. Um, that stood out for me for the picture. And then for my showing sentence, I have, quote, to strive or try for success is the school slogan. So the topic of my sentence is a school slogan. Our word is strive and our synonym is or try. Thursday's word uh, Thursday's word is to negotiate. And to negotiate, negotiate is a verb as well. It's something that you do. Um, it means to barter, sorry, it means to bargain with another person um, or some, somebody else. Somehow you're going back and forth trying to come up with uh, um, something that works for both of you. So a synonym or similar words would be to consult or haggle or barter. So you might do this on things like a loan. Well, I don't, I need this much money and this is how much interest I'll give you on it. Um, maybe you are buying a car and you want a better price. So you're going to negotiate to get a better price on the car because the sticker price you feel isn't what you want to pay for that. Um, or you can even go um, away from the idea of money and you can do a truce. So if you study the American Revolution, uh, you know, there's a lot of negotiation that goes on where people are trying to find a solution so that we don't have to continue on with a war. Um, and so that's negotiate. The picture I found, it's Dwight from The Office. So if you've ever seen The Office, um, it, it's just a funny little meme that stood out to me and I liked it. Um, so we negotiate with you, but you won't negotiate with us. And he looks all you know angry about it. So it's just kind of one of those trying to find a common ground um, and to bargain for something. So my showing sentence is the homeowner negotiated or haggled for a good price on the new house. So my topic is the homeowner and the new house. Um, they want a better price. And then I have negotiate, which is our word for the day. And then I have or haggled as my uh, synonym for that word. So today we're going to talk about how a plot unfolds and how a story has these different parts. So you might know it as a plot mountain. Um, I'm not sure I can't remember some of the other terms that might be used for it, but you've probably seen it as beginning, middle and end or beginning climax and ending. Um, but stories are a bit more complex than that. So when we're looking at how a plot unfolds, we're looking at the beginning of a story, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and then the ending or resolution of the story. 
Um, so a beginning, what it does is it hooks your reader. It introduces the story or the problem. It introduces characters and it sets the scene for what's happening. Um, this can take anywhere from a couple sentences to a larger chunk of the story, um, depending on when the incident that triggers the action happens. And the inciting incident is actually when the problem is introduced. So when, you know, um, it's part of the rising action. So it's what causes the problem to happen. Um, and then the events that unfold, now that the problem has been introduced, um, the events that unfold that lead you to the climax are called the rising action. Um, then you have the climax, which we've all been told is the most exciting part of the story. It's usually the most intense, but it's when you're dealing with the problem in the story, um, it's things are kind of like coming to a head. Um, it's, 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 and it's not always the middle of the story. The climax could be, you know, could happen late in the story, could happen right in the middle, but don't always think it's just the middle of the story. But it's when things really start to get exciting and tense and you're wanting to know, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? Um, after the climax has happened, you have the falling action. And this is where all the loose ends of the story start to come and wrap up. So um, the problem finds its solution. Um, things you've introduced as questions might be answered. Um, and this section, again, can be long or short, um, but it's it's wrapping up all the details of your, your story. And then you have an ending or a resolution. Uh, and this is the story essentially ends. And this is where, you know, you have that idea of um, the author's leaving you with something to think about. So there, there might be that reflection on the message of the story or, um, you know, everything kind of ties together, um, but your story ends. Um, it's not a dot, dot, dot. It's not a to be continued. Um, the story ends and it should leave your reader with something to think about. So these are the parts of the, the plot mountain. So this is what a plot mountain looks like. Again, it might look familiar to you. And when you click on each of these, it should take you to um, the page and the definition for what those things are. So this is what a plot mountain looks like. And currently this is what we call a single plot mountain. There is a double and a triple plot mountain, which you'll get to later in the year. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually go back and I want to um, if you could take a moment right now to go back and read Thank You, Ma'am, on your own, um, because what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to reveal how to plot out a story, because you are going to have to plot out your personal narrative on a plot mountain to make sure that you have all of these pieces of a story. So take a moment right now and read Thank You, Ma'am, and then return to this video when you're done with that. Okay, so remember in Thank You, Ma'am, it's a story about a boy named Roger and a woman named Mrs. Jones. And Roger um, tries to steal her purse and um, all the events that unfold afterwards and kind of what happens to him because of his decision to um, try to steal her purse because he wanted money to buy himself some shoes some blue suede shoes, which again are an extravagance. It's a splurge purchase. It's not a, um, it's not a necessity purchase. Um, blue suede shoes were, you know, like having the newest iPhone, that kind of thing. Um, so if we plot out, thank you, ma'am, and we go through the events, here's how the story unfolds as a plot mountain. So the beginning of the story, um, we essentially, we meet Roger, we meet Mrs. Jones, and um, they come into contact when Roger tries to steal her purse. This happens immediately. The beginning is so short um, because we have this immediate setup of the interaction on the sidewalk. And so you could also add into this the setting um, of the story. It's in a city on a sidewalk, um, you know, those kinds of things as well. So, but the beginning of the story, we essentially, we meet Roger. We don't know his name yet. We meet Mrs. Jones. We don't know her name yet, but they come into contact with each other on the sidewalk when Roger tries to steal her purse. 
Now, the stealing of the purse is what we would call the inciting incident. It's the incident that causes the plot to start in motion and for things to start to happen. And with that inciting incident, with that inciting incident, um, we have the rising action occur. And so the rising action, these are the events that take us from um, the beginning to the climax of the story. This is where the purse strap breaks and Mrs. Luella Jones grabs Roger, then drags him back to her house. And then she turns him loose by the sink. So all the events that fall into that section are part of the rising action because what we consider the climax is Roger's decision to either stay or to run away. And so the climax is Roger is left with the choice to stay or to leave Mrs. Jones's house. Roger chooses to stay because he wants to see what she'll do for him. So this is the climax. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go? Is he going to stay? Is he going to go? And then, of course, he chooses to stay. And so because he chooses to stay, now that he's made that decision, now that he's not going to run away from Mrs. Jones, now that he's going to face the issue, now we move towards the resolution of the story. And so that's where we have the falling action in the story. And in the falling action, we have Mrs. Jones shares with him how she's made mistakes in the past. Um, she also feeds Roger and treats him like family, and she gives him advice. So this is all part of the, the falling action where they're sitting down together, they're having a meal, um, they're, they're talking or she's talking, um, and she's sharing with him the things that she has. So she's sharing with him her food, her home, um, and all of that. And so in conclusion, then, she, she ends up giving him the money um, that he was wanting to steal from her. Then she tells him to behave himself. He says, thank you. And she shuts the door. And that's how it concludes, like a real final kind of moment there when she shuts the door. And so when we're looking at a story, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. We're looking to come up with the different pieces of how the plot is unfolding. And so what I'd like for you to do on, the, on your own personal slide is to actually plot your own story. So I want you to go to your narrative that you wrote and I want you to look through your story and I want you to tell me what's the beginning. So who, who's introduced, what happens at the very be in the very beginning of the story, what events are taking you to the problem what is the what is the the conflict where are you facing this conflict then the events that are taking you to finally the resolution and the closure where you leave your reader with something to think about and so i know you might get frustrated and feel this is a difficult task but if you don't try to do this now um you're going to be missing parts of your story and so it's better to find out where you're missing pieces of your story now while you're still in the drafting phase than to realize later on, oh my gosh, I'm missing all these holes in my story. And so that's what I'd like you to work on for the rest of the day is to, um, to fill out this single plot mountain for your narrative story. And if you have questions, please make sure that you email me and I'll be more than happy to help you and I will see you guys.